Well, I mean, this episode of Raw didn't make me want to dive headfirst into an empty swimming pool, so I guess uh, that's an improvement, right? Wrestling review for Monday Night Raw, episode November 11th, 2013. And uh, I know I said I wasn't going to make a Raw review this week, but I found some time to do at least a quick one. So we're going to do a short version. And uh, we're just going to run through things here. I'm going to give you my thoughts as quick as I can. So, here we go. Let's talk about this opening segment, alright? We had a bunch of fucks that I don't care about arguing about who was going to drive the garbage truck that is Raw to the landfill this week. Uh, eventually, after a bunch of, oh, here comes this guy, oh, here comes that guy, oh, here comes this person, I don't give a shit about, we eventually get to Randy Orton versus Goldust and Cody Rhodes in a handicap match. Match was okay, it was a little slow. Orton lost in the end by a count out, then Big Show came out and attacked him, and fuck, that title match is gonna suck so much ass, I mean, it's just gonna be so bad, I can't believe they're doing it, still, and that they're gonna make people pay for it. However, the choke slam off of the steps, through the announce table, that was a pretty cool spot, done a lot better than last week's Big Show you know, quadruple however many teamed attack and then triple power bomb through a table. That just felt like agony, but this was actually interesting and entertaining. Oh, we had Los Matadors back on the show taking on Guess Who. It's like 90% of the time they have to take on the three-man band. I think that's just part of their repackage is they could only fight three-man band like nine out of their ten matches. So Tino Morello was in there too. Whatever. This fucking shit was stupid. Up next we had uh, Kofi Kingston pulling out his jobber badge. He lost to Damian Sandow. Nothing big there. Then we had Curtis Axel versus Dolph Ziggler in an official Intercontinental title match. This match was a hell of a lot better than the, the match these two had last week. I think they worked well together in the ring on Monday and uh, Axel won by using one of his many finishers. I've seen him use like three or four different moves for his finisher. So I don't I don't even remember what that one's called. But he beat Dolph Ziggler clean. Ziggler you know, can't get a win where it counts. Can barely get a win where it doesn't count. Just put Ziggler and Kofi together and have them win the tag team titles. Let's do it. Up next we had a Divas match. I don't think so. After that we had Tyson Kidd versus Fandango. Uh, I like this match. It was fun. It was fast paced. Uh, Tyson Kidd was trying a little too hard to get the crowd to react to him. And Fandango, he won in the end by, he countered a roll-up from Tyson Kidd into his own pinning combination. So, yeah, I like the match. And Tyson Kidd, you know, I think if he comes out bringing all that energy, but just, if he just stops basically screaming, Cheer for me! Chant my name! You know, the crowd will get behind him over time. Oh, John Cena versus Jack Swagger and Antonio Cesaro. I tell you what, I kept this on long enough just to hear Cena get booed, and they booed him hard. Not just out of the fucking building, but right out of fucking England, man. Good job, England crowd. But after I laughed my ass off for a couple seconds, I whoop, I skipped the rest of that shit. But I'll give you a wild guess who won. And then, uh... Del Rio attacked Cena after the match. He started beating the shit out of his arm, and uh, crowds chanting, yes, well, Del Rio's doing this. Terrific. That's WWE listening to and understanding their audience again. And I'll give you another wild guess. You know, you could rip Cena's arm clean off of his body. Who do you think's still going to win that title match? And then Big E Langston came out to save Cena. I didn't see that one coming, but, uh, you know, good for Big E. They're putting him in this higher-profile position. We have Ryback versus R-Truth. <laughs> uh, Truth got a quick pinfall victory. So many fucks I do not give. Up next we had Big E Langston versus Alberto Del Rio. And, yeah, the match was alright. I thought Big E looked good in the match. Del Rio won with a crappy-ass cross-arm breaker. And the crowd was pretty dead for this match. I mean, they they weren't really into it. They were doing the wave. They didn't give a shit. All right, up next we have Paul Heyman. He's back. He's in the ring. He's all mangled up in his wheelchair. And, uh... I thought just the sight of that was funny. He completely disses Ryback, shuns him, blames him for not being able to beat CM Punk. So CM Punk was able to get to him. Uh, so I guess that little team up is done. But you know that's fine with me because I just don't, I just don't fucking care about Ryback at this point. So then Punk comes out, he nails the GTS on Curtis Axel, who was out there as well. 
And then uh, when he gets in the ring, he spins Heyman around in his wheelchair, tosses him out of the chair, and then he just kendo sticks the shit out of him, which was pretty good stuff. Even though all he really did was just hit all of that uh, padding and braces that... Heyman was wearing. After that, we have uh, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan versus The Shield in a handicap match in what I believe is the first time Punk and Daniel Bryan have ever teamed up in, a, in the WWE. And I really like this match. I mean, it was long, it was entertaining, and you know, once Punk got the hot tag, things really started picking up towards the end. Punk hit Reigns with the GTS, and then he got Dean Ambrose in the Anaconda Vice, and it looked like Ambrose was about to tap when the lights go out. Wyatt's show up. And when the Wyatt's and the Shield started attacking each other, that was pretty awesome. I mean, that was a pretty cool moment. The crowd was going ballistic. They were flipping out for it. Having uh, Ambrose and Rollins in the ring with uh, Luke and Rowan, you know, just smack talking and then starting going after each other. And then Reigns and Bray on the outside. And the crowd, like I said, they're, they're flipping out. And then, you know, all six guys turn towards Punk and Daniel Bryan. And then... Punk and Daniel Bryan get in the ring, and the other guys surround the ring, and that's when you had the Usos, and you had Cody Rhodes and Goldust come out. After a quick brawl, you had all the faces inside the ring standing tall with all the heels backing down. So there you go, there's your 6 on 6 Survivor Series match. I don't know if they're going to make it to 7 on 7 and throw two more guys in there, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much your Survivor Series matchup for the pay-per-view. So overall, uh, like I said at the beginning, Raw was better than what it has been lately. I mean, they have just had this series of weeks of just garbage and fucking frustrating and rage-inducing Raws. I mean, they've been really, really bad. But this one, it wasn't bottom of the barrel. I mean, yeah, there were some parts on here that were garbage, and Cena was, you know, just god-awful as always, but I didn't fucking watch that shit this week. But overall, it's not as bad as it has been recently. So, let's go ahead and give these Raws a rating from now on. I'm going to give this episode a C-. minus. It was, you know, the matches were, the parts that I liked, they were okay. It was a bunch of good and okay matches mixed in with a couple of really shitty parts. Alright, JV Squared, 61279 with a quick Raw review, and I will see you guys next time.